Did you know that the building sector is responsible for 40% of the world's carbon dioxide emissions? I sure didn't. Carbon dioxide is one of the most common greenhouse gases that is produced by human activity. It sticks around in our atmosphere and is what contributes to global warming. Let that sink in. If you work in the building sector, you have an enormous responsibility and ability to do something about this. In fact, you can do much more than the average Joe recycling his beer bottles on a Friday and reusing his grocery bags. If I go to Google right now and type in sustainable architecture though, this is what pops up. Lots and lots of skyscrapers with a lot of trees on them. Hey, it's green. That's sustainable, right? Look at all those trees. Wrong. Sustainability is a lot more complicated than that. In fact, one of the biggest issues affecting our ability to differentiate between what is sustainable architecture and what isn't has a lot to do with something called greenwashing. Greenwashing is when the hype and marketing overemphasizes the actual sustainable impact of something. This could be a product or, for example, a building or built project. For example, a building could be built in a way that is extremely bad for the environment. But by putting some solar panels or a green roof on top of the building, that project can suddenly be promoted as a sustainable building because there's little to no regulation on what a sustainable building actually is. If you ask me and other industry leaders working with sustainability, it all comes down to the materials we use for buildings and the journey of that material. Did you know that the average lifespan of a building is 50 years? Humans have longer lifespans than buildings do. We create all these materials, put them in a building, and then after 50 years, essentially throw them out. It's a process that's extremely wasteful and very, very bad for our environment. Do you remember drinking and eating from styrofoam cups and plates? As a kid, having some tea in a styrofoam cup was the norm. Until I learned in school that they were buried in landfills. After 500 years, my styrofoam cup would still be there, somewhere, biodegrading very, very, very slowly. But why would we use styrofoam at all as a material for cups? It turns out that styrofoam is really good at insulating. When used in a cup with warm beverages, it helps keep the liquid warm while preventing you from burning your hands. When I started studying architectural technology, I was shocked to learn that the industry standard for insulating foundations and basements is to use expanded polystyrene, EPS, which is a fancy name for styrofoam. As it turns out, in the European Union alone, there are 200 kilotons of this styrofoam waste per year. About half of it is burned in an incinerator to create electricity. 7.5% of it is recycled and the rest is buried in a landfill where it will still be hundreds of years later. What's worse is that EPS is difficult to recycle because it's made with tons of pollutants. We use adhesives and cements to stick it to building facades. It's really difficult to remove these and reuse the EPS. But if I Google polystyrene in construction, what comes up is a lot of pages talking about how it is a sustainable building material because it's a great insulator. When we insulate our buildings, we are reducing the carbon footprint required to heat and cool it. So in general, insulation is really good. The greenwashing happens when we fail to discuss the overall impact and issues that come from relying solely on materials like styrofoam. And why is styrofoam the industry standard? Because it's the cheapest and the easiest to use. So to sum it all up, the materials we use in buildings have an enormous impact on our environment and the way we build at the moment is inherently unsustainable. For so long, we've basically built structures and shapes for whatever we felt like. We chose the cheapest materials that sometimes have to be shipped around the globe. Worse, there are also many clients and architects willing to compromise sustainability in order to achieve a certain aesthetic. Sustainability is often considered last in the building process, when, if it was considered from the very start, would have a stronger impact and also be more affordable. I want this series to give people the tools to understand this massive, nuanced topic. 
If you aren't working in the industry or don't really understand how a building is put together, it's hard to realize the impact this can have on your life. I want to leave you guys with this question. Do you know where the materials in your building or house came from? And do you know where they're going after demolition? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below and stay tuned for more.